Hey guys, it's James here for James and Aaron. Uh, we're continuing in our Church Word series. Today we're going to talk about eternal life. What does that mean? So today we're going to be talking about eternal life, just like James said. And we want you to think about it like this. We have our space, earth, and God's got heaven. So we want to think in terms of eternal life being two spaces, heaven and earth. So I think it's pretty easy for us to understand uh, what we mean by earth, right? Being our space, you know, it's the, it's, uh, the created world around us, right? The, the rocks, the trees, the grass, the planet as a whole. Uh, that part is easy for us to grasp, right? But when we start talking about heaven, uh, that becomes a lot more difficult, right? And uh, even in the Bible, it's not like super clear what is meant by that, right? Uh, in fact, a lot of times, especially in the Old Testament, you, you know, they didn't really have this sort of uh, formulated concept of, of heaven like we do today. Uh, they talked about the heavens as being like the earth, the atmosphere uh, and in some ways the like what lies beyond that right uh, so it becomes really tough to grasp and somewhere in that uh, is is where God exists right so there's this idea going on in the Bible that there's actually like there's some overlap between the two right that actually like the heavens and earth uh, somehow overlap with each other so you might hear this phrase going to heaven when you die but we don't really talk a lot about this overlapping space and today we are because i think that's where we're going to get into a little bit of eternal life yeah so if you're familiar with uh you know the story of adam and eve in the book of genesis uh, it paints this picture of uh, heaven and earth actually existing in the same place together right it says that uh you know the, the garden was like paradise that god walked with adam and eve in that place uh, but because of uh, their actions uh, that that union between heaven and earth was fractured right and that's sort of what caused that division between uh, our space and God's space. So the Bible is all about these two spaces coming back together and God working to, to bring these, these two spaces together. Heaven and earth becoming one again. So in order to understand how these two kingdoms, if you will, we have our kingdom and God has his kingdom and how they were fractured and and now how God is working to bring them back. We have to understand a little bit about how ancient temples had a had a, a play in in this. So let's go check out one of our temples right now. We'll see you in just a sec. Yeah, so in the Bible where we see that overlap happening was, uh, well, in a couple of places. So uh, firstly, uh, in the tabernacle, right, when the nation of Israel was journeying through the desert, they had this like big tent that they would set up was basically like a, a mobile church, I guess, in today's words, right? Uh, so wherever they stopped to camp, they would set up the tabernacle and, uh, and God's presence would be in that place. Later on, as the nation um, uh, entered into the promised land and, and sort of uh, became their own people, uh, they built the, the temple in Jerusalem, right? And so inside the temple in Jerusalem, there was this space called the Holy of Holies, right? Uh, and, and it was in that place that uh, the Ark of the Covenant was located and, and God's presence was in that space. And so that's where we see this overlap between God's space and our space. So the Holy of Holies was like this, this hot spot to, to be fully surrounded by God, but this still created a problem because 
we still have our space and God's space because God's space is full of goodness and, and righteousness. But we're still in our space. And this created a problem for, for us in these two spaces to overlap because we were still a part of our broken, sinful world while being in God's perfect presence. And that's a problem. So speaking of that space, the Holy of Holies in the, in the temple, right? Uh, an interesting piece about that is there was like, there was this curtain around that space that separated it from the rest of the temple. And actually it was like, uh, it was very limited as to who could have access to that space, right? Uh, and it was only certain times of the year that, uh, that the high priest would go in and, and be in that Holy of Holies space with, God's presence, right? Interesting thing that happened when Jesus was on the cross. Uh, there's this account of, of him uh, crucified on the cross. Uh, and, and at the moment that he dies, the gospels say that at that moment, uh, the sky went dark, the earth shook, all these things happened. And it says that that, that, that curtain in the temple was torn in two, that, uh, that suddenly uh, access to the Holy of Holies was open right and and it's a it's it's a spiritual symbol of uh of what jesus did on the cross right of that um of bringing heaven and earth back into union together right uh now it's not fully happened for sure but it was the start of it right it's what uh through through jesus's death and resurrection the separation between us became much thinner so you might be asking even this question, how can they be together if they're so different? And back then, this is where um, we talk about animal sacrifices, and they had to take, uh, the priest had to bring an animal into the temple and sacrifice it. And somehow, uh, it's based on some cosmic understanding, is the animal took on the person's sin. And that's, that was acceptable to, to God of that time. And so this sacrifice and this availability to God was only, just what James said, was only available to certain people at a certain time. So the question is, how does everybody be a part of this? How does everybody be a part of this presence of God? So again, this is where Jesus comes in and uh, and and brings those two spaces closer together, right? Uh, in the book of John, it says that uh, Jesus, that, that the word became flesh and dwelled among us, right? Uh, it's talking about Jesus here, that, that God became flesh in the form of Jesus and dwelled among us. And uh, it's, it's neat because the word, the Greek word used for dwelled in the Bible is actually the same word used for temple. So uh, God came and templed among us. So here's what's even more fascinating is that Jesus is now claiming that he is that space where heaven and earth overlap. So another way we see this overlap happening in the person of Jesus is, is simply through his ministry, right? What he did during his time here on earth. Uh, if we read through the gospel accounts again, we see Jesus going out and, uh, and healing people, feeding people, uh, casting out demons, all of these things that are, uh, that really are just examples of heaven here on earth. Almost like he was creating little pockets of heaven here on earth. Like everywhere he went and everyone that he interacted with was now interacting with heaven and eternal life. So now Jesus is claiming that these two spaces are now coming together because of him. It's kind of like this, come on in here. We have God's space, and now we've got our space. And in the middle is where Jesus is claiming that he's bringing everything back. And everything that he did in the middle of that space is where God's kingdom was really at hand. And that was Jesus' central message. 
everywhere he went. He didn't talk about a lot about salvation or anything like that. His, he did, but the main message that he mostly told people was the kingdom of God is here or the kingdom of God is at hand. And what he was referring to was himself and who he interacted with. Here is where he was talking about the kingdom of God. It's those, those spaces of overlap, which was himself, the dwelling place, the, the temple. He was the place that people interacted with the presence of God. So we've got this picture of Jesus uh, as the now the temple here on earth, right? And he's doing all these sort of crazy, amazing, uh, spirit-filled things in his ministry, right? Uh, but then we see uh, on the night he's, he's about to be arrested, right? He's sitting there eating with the disciples and he starts talking, uh, kind of seems like crazy talk to them at the time, right? But he talks about, you know, the time has come, uh, I must go, but I'm going to leave a gift behind for you. In fact, it's better that I go because then you'll get this gift, right? Uh, and the gift he's talking about is uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, the idea that the eternal life uh, will now dwell in us, right? In fact, so we see this cool transition of, you know, Old Testament leading up to Jesus, you know, God, um, God's presence, uh, heaven on earth was in the temple, right? Then Jesus comes and he becomes the temple. That's where God is residing. Uh, but when Jesus passes, uh, he leaves us this gift of eternal life where we become the temple, right? We are now the temple, the place where God resides here on earth. I think that's pretty cool. You still might have one overarching question because we started this video in a cemetery talking about these two spaces and this space that we are in, we will die. And that might be an overarching question that you have is what happens when I die? A lot of people think that when they die, they just fly over into God's space. And is that the case? Believe it or not, the focus of the Bible is not about the afterlife and when we die. It's about the here and now. And the beautiful thing that we're talking about with afterlife is it starts now. We can be a part of this now. Death is just a, a part of that, but we can be a part of Jesus and, and God's presence now in our world is what we're talking about. So it's not about going to heaven when we die. It's about going to heaven when we're alive now. I think one of the most awesome things that Jesus said in, in when, he, when he was teaching his friends and his followers to pray was that may, uh, may your will be done just on earth as it is in heaven. What God wants for heaven, he wants for earth. So it's not about us waiting to go and be with God when we die. You know, if we're talking about Jesus being this temple and being the presence right now, you know, Jesus is calling us to die to ourselves and, and be with him now. And that is the invitation that we have, not when we die, when we're alive, so that we can experience heaven in the afterlife right now now and that is such a, a beautiful awesome invitation because it's not about death so really i think it, it comes down to this right you have a you have a choice to make as always right uh and the question is uh, do you want to participate in heaven on earth uh do you want to receive the gift of eternal life uh, and do you have a desire to be the presence of God here on earth, to be uh, his temple, to go out and to, uh, and, and to be that uh, presence spirit of God here on earth? For James and Aaron, I'm James, and before he gets to it, I'm going to beat him to the punch and push Aaron to ah! his death.